Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our channel introduction to the plague. If you're here to see the adept challenge, uh, that's I think you'll want to see not the best survivors, but man, does she make it look easy? Uh, then I'm gonna give you the number, the number to which the time to which to skip to down below. If you're very new to the the plague, though, and uh, you haven't seen everything else, I'm gonna go over her lore. I'm gonna go over her perks, and uh, then the gameplay is gonna come up. It is on the new map. Again, if you just want the gameplay, the Adept Challenge gameplay with her three perks um, on the new map, then there will be a timestamp down below in the description and also in the comments. And you can just click on that and skip all the stuff you already know. But if you don't already know, we're going to go over her perks and some of her add-ons uh, real quick. So the plague is, she, she's, she's hilarious, she pukes on you, okay? And I'm going to go through her power to explain this and we're gonna do we're gonna talk about her powers and her perks then we're gonna go through her lore and um, then we're gonna get into the gameplay so vile purge hold down the power button to charge it releasing the button unleashes a stream of infectious bile you can move at what seems to be normal speed while spewing or maybe it's slightly below normal speed but it's pretty fast a survivor hit by the stream becomes infected a survivor accumulates an amount of infection by being hit Running or performing interactions, environmental objects also become infected for a short duration when hit by the stream. So what does this mean? When you hit a survivor with your vomit, they start getting an infection when they're running or when they're performing actions. When a certain amount of infections happen, well, that, we'll talk about that soon, but uh, I also should mention that environmental objects such as windows and pallets can be infected by your spew, which can help you to down people during chases and pallet loops. So every time they're going over the pallet loop, they're getting a little bit more infection going through them. You still have to end up M1-ing them, though. They cannot go all the way down to the dying state. Now, we're going to get into that. If the survivor's infection indicator is completely filled, the survivor is forced to vomit and continues to do so at random intervals. They become injured, so they're very loud, if they are not already injured. And they gain the broken status effect, they can't be healed. Okay? And they pass on their infections to other survivors, as well as any environmental objects that they interact with. So if you got a lot of survivors in the same area, you can maybe spew up on some of the different uh, and, uh, pallets and, and uh, volts that go in and out of the place and perhaps infect multiple survivors very in a very short period of time. Infected survivors can remove all infection by interacting with a pool of devotion. And these are located throughout the map. You see them as, uh, as a white... Uh, outlined kind of like the pig box. This blocks from further use by other survivors. If the survivor is injured, they become healthy when they use, when they remove the infection. If all pools of devotion are corrupt at the same time, all pools revert to their clean state. So you cannot have it so that they cannot cleanse themselves. It's one of the first things I was thinking about. The plague may also consume, and this is important, the corruption at a pool of devotion that has previously been used by a survivor. So once the survivor has cleansed themselves at a pool, um, the plague can use that then, can absorb that energy from the, from the corrupted pool, and then they get extra powerful. Their corrupt purge now instantly damages any survivors hit by the stream, but does not imply infection. What does this mean? If you, this means that when you have this empowered ability, when you use your M2, you're still moving, you're still running at a, maybe slightly smaller than survivor speed, when you hit them with it, they take a hit. They take a damage point or whatever you want. To, they move down a state. And so you can very easily hit them twice while moving, kind of like a Huntress, a Huntress has that really, really easy down ability because uh, she does not take the recharge time from a successful hit. Um, that's kind of how it works. And, and I do a pretty poor job in the beginning of the gameplay of showing this uh, because of some of the loops and some of the areas we were at, but I do a much better job towards the middle and the end. Uh, by the way, the gameplay is my first time playing, but she's pretty simple. Um, let's go through her perks now. Infectious Fright. This one's uh, kind of useful. The cries of the unfaithful make your heart leap. Any survivors that are within the killer's terror radius while another survivor is put into the dying state with your basic attack will yell and reveal their location for six seconds. So you get to see where they were. It's um, You don't see them walking and moving like you would with, say barbecue you kind of see them like you do rancor you just see pop and then that'll remain there for six seconds can be very useful when there's only a couple survivors left and you're trying to uh make sure nobody gets the hatch dark devotion 
The display of your power creates a whirlwind of panic that spreads through the land. This one is neat as heck. You become obsessed with one survivor. Hitting the obsession with your basic attack causes the obsession to emit a 32 meter tear radius for 20 seconds. During that time, your tear radius is reduced to zero. This effect can only be triggered once every 60 seconds. This means that at tier one, I, I think it goes up. I don't know exactly how far it goes up. I'm sorry. Uh, but at tier one, if you hit your obsession, you become totally silent tear radius wise for 20 seconds. And that will go up. I just don't know to what number that goes up. What does this mean? This means generator yoinks. This means a lot of jump scares. The plague is gonna be freaky with this perk, especially at tier three. Pretty neat stuff, honestly. Corrupt intervention, your prayers and, oh, by the way, as an aside, imagine the other killers you could do this with. It's terrifying. All right, going on. Corrupt intervention, very, very, very good perk. She's got two stellar perks and one okay perk. I'm very impressed with her, uh, with her perks, honestly. Your prayers invoke a dark power that meddles with the survivor's chance of survival. Three generators located further from you are blocked by the entity for 80 seconds at the start of the trial. I believe that um, it doesn't change from being three generators. Maybe it goes up to four. I don't think it goes up to five. I don't know. I, this is only a tier one. Uh, and I've, like I said, I've not played her yet. This is my first time playing her, and uh, she's, she's ton of fun. Uh, but it, this is a very good way to slow down the game a little bit. You're not having three gener three survivors spawn at the other end of the map and completing a generator before you get it down. Great way to uh, to just slow the game down a little bit, right? Let's go over one of the only of her ultra rare add-ons that I've picked up so far, which is Iridescent Seal. Moderately decreases movement speed while holding Corrupt Purge. So that means that when you're holding in your mouth, you go slower. Tremendously decreases the duration of Corrupt Purge, so it doesn't spew as long. But Vile Furge becomes Corrupt Purge every time a generator is completed. This means that every time a generator pops, your, your, your throw up doesn't last as long and you can't move so fast, but it does damage. I think this can be pretty powerful. It's very similar in concept to like the, um, the clown's pinky finger. Okay. We're going to go over some of her lore now. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, show you the gameplay. All right. The Plague's backstory. She's listed as intermediate, but... Nah, I mean, I play a lot of killers, so maybe she is intermediate. I, I find her to be very, very simple and easy and very enjoyable. When she was five years old, Adiris, the youngest of a family of seven, was left on the brick-red burning steps of the Temple of Purgation at the center of Babylon. To process her shock and sorrow, she held on to the belief that the gods had a plan for her. Her new life was one of quiet servitude. She would tend to the gardens, prepare ceremonial meals, and polish ceremonial incense burners. At night, she would pray for a sign that would reveal her purpose. When she came of age, she attended the higher-ranking priests during the yearly worshipping of the sea goat, which is the kind of god I personally would like to worship, and also the god of water and creation. Swinging a censer down the great hippo style hall hypo i don't know she cast thick black fumes that reached the cold towering stone pillars before dissipating her worries lifted and the resulting bliss made her feel closer to the gods than ever she worked herself to the bone each day that followed fulfilling her duties while taking on new ones as she aided the priests during purification rituals the priests were more and more in need of assistance Cleansings were being performed daily to answer the demand from outside the high temple walls, where a catastrophic plague had resurfaced. Within months, the priests contact, contracted the disease. It did not take long before they became too weak to perform any kind of ritual. Adiris, having assisted many purification rituals, was the only one able to carry on. The swelling panic had to be contained, even by a novice. Anxious before her first ceremony, Adiris visited the priest's sanctuary chamber. When she lit the candle, she noticed a narrow opening at the back. Sliding through the gap, she reached a crypt, 
hidden under the sanctuary. The chamber was bare except for the golden statue of a woman who stood outstretched hands, her fingers covered in jewels. It was the sign Adrius had been waiting for. The great hall was packed with followers who bowed down as Adrius entered. She strode to the brick altar and grabbed a ceremonial dagger forged in silver, her ruby fingers wrapping around the blade-like claws. The sudden display of luxury intrigued the followers who were struck already by her youth and beauty. As she began reciting the epic of creation, a woman at the back swooned and collapsed. Adiris rushed to her and noticed the black blisters covering her feet. Without hesitation, Adiris grabbed her sacred blade and swung it at her own foot, severing a toe. Then she offered the bloody part to the gods, asking them to protect the woman. A silence fell over the followers, who revered Adiris as their new priestess. Tales of her wealth, beauty, and devotion began to spread across the city as quickly as the disease. Soon, Adiris' followers called her the High Priestess of Babylon. But her faith was tried when she showed the first signs of infection. Her cough became a mix of blood and phlegm. Her neck erupted in abscesses, and her four-toed foot dark and ashamed of her condition. She began wearing a veiled headpiece and carried a censer that masked the rancid smell of sick that clung to her skin. Hoping to be saved, she kept performing the rituals, offering blessed water and food to her followers, but no ritual could save her. In a desperate attempt to appease the gods, Adiris banished herself from the city. She traveled north with a few followers, venturing through the cold woodlands of Ratshu until it was no longer possible for her to walk. They camped in a dark cave where Adiris lay in a pool of her own vomit. Her foot, which had turned entirely black, was so swollen she could go no further. Her followers and she realized the truth in that cave. They were all infected. They were all plagued. Kneeling among her retching followers, Adiris made one last prayer. The black fumes of incest rose into the damp air before being wiped off by a cool breeze. Neither the body of Adiris nor her followers were ever found. Many told tales of her return, but no one truly knew what fate had befallen the High Priestess of Babylon. All right, I gotta tell you, she's a ton of fun. She's so cool. So enjoyable to play, ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, this is what I'm running. Ash and Apple, Incis Ointment. I'm going to tell you that in this clip in a second. And we're going to go for the Adept. I'm not going to show you Hermori. Hermori is amazing, but I'm hoping you've already seen it. Um, I kind of want to just do the Adept the old-fashioned way without a Mori or anything like that. So, hopefully you guys enjoy. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Playing our first game as uh, the Plague. We've uh, played against her a bit. Gonna bring in only our three Infectious Frights. The Cries of the Unfaithful Make Your Heart Leap. When you down somebody, the nearby survivors yell. Dark dev uh, Devotion, uh, where you become obsessed with the survivor. Hitting them, transfer your terror days to them. And then Corrupt Intervention. The three generators are located away furthest from you when you spawn are frozen for 80 seconds. Ash and Apple, we get an extra pool of, de of devoted of corrupted devotion, and then uh, incre increased movement speed while charging, vile purge, and um, so basically we're going for a full-on puke fest, more or less, uh, with this particular build. It's a puke fest. We're gonna see how much vomit we can spew. If you've not yet seen the per uh, the plague, she's hilarious and wonderful in every single way. Uh, she's not a top-tier killer, but she is pretty darn good. And there's nothing quite like uh, having a nice frozen screen to start off with just to make you feel like you've DC'd. And perhaps, indeed, I have. Anyway, uh, so we're going to go basically for the um, for the achievement, for the Plague Adept achievement. We are in the PTB. Uh, I couldn't wait any longer to play her. But um, I think that uh, I think that you'll enjoy... You'll enjoy uh, watching her puke on people. As, hopefully as much as I do, which is a lot.
All right, we got the new map, which is pretty cool. The new map, I'm assuming you're not aware, is super sexy, super hot, super fun. And um, we're, we're super ready to puke on people. So it's likely that they spawned away from us. Smack too, actually. I know that they just get injured anyway. Yeah, listen, you you've lost now. You've lost now. Somebody downstairs in that generator. That's what we've learned. Not the most uh, helpful information currently. Alright, so the puke, I didn't do a very good job of explaining what the puke does, right? So what the puke does for her is they get injured over time. He's moving underneath. More puke for you! You see, but you're just standing here. I feel like it might as well hit you. She had a lithe. There's a window up here. Okay. She might have a decisive. Smacked and fell. Try to throw her off her decisive right there. Man, you know what? I, I like her puking. And it does help out. But uh, these people, are, they're, they're playing the puke. Alright, so, so one of these was corrupted. One of the pools was corrupted, but I think we might have somebody else down here. So when a pool gets corrupted, I can uh, take that corruption and then use it to cause instantaneous damage. Pretty neat. We're on two... Two hits already. Two, um... I thought I saw something there. Okay, well, we're here. We'll try not to tunnel. Did we not get that? We didn't get it. Our puke missed. Our puke missed. There you go. We puked on her now. A smacker, anyway. So if I just continue to puke on her, she'll actually become injured regardless. But like, I feel like it's a free hit. It's a free hit. Yeah, no. That ain't happening. Oh, we saw Boo. We're gonna walk right over towards them. I will totally smack you. I don't know what the heck you think you're doing. I'm gonna run away now. You see another person. You see him over there? This is corrupted. So, sorry. I get to pick up Vile Purge. Or I think I actually misclicked that one. Looking for you, dude. Hello? More vomit. More vomit necessary. See what I'm saying? Like this, I could have smacked you already. Does that make sense? And she still wasn't, she still hadn't yet been um, damaged by the purge. So really the value of this killer. Yep, you just did not see that coming. Another person downstairs is to have them unpurge themselves and then you take from the fountain the purge. Now I've not, I've not done the killer yet, like I said, so. Ingest corruption, there you go. So I have now ingested the corruption means that I now will do damage when I hit them. So you'll see the difference now. And this is the value. That is the value right there. 
Maybe I should have just kept swinging at people, to be quite honest with you. Because there was more people downstairs. That is the value of this killer. It's not... It's not the actual vomit itself. I mean, it's a good way to maybe get the timer ticking for... Am I still purged? I don't know. Oh, this way. She's still coughing. And injured. I don't know. Am I still... Downable? No, I'm not. Oh, there is a way through here. It's not happening. Bruno, I think you're dead on hook. I guess I'll take that. So I, I can't recall off the top of my head exactly how long it lasts, but it's not very long. It's not very long that you have the purge available. But it's a powerful, powerful, short-term kind of gain. We might leave that stuff. We've been chain destroying people. Somebody's still trying to get this down. <laughs> we'll keep puking. I'll show you exactly what it is I mean. I mean, there is some value to doing that. So she is now injured. And I've not had to take any time uh, recharging my uh, my swing. But if you're like, if you've got them kind of pinned up or cornered up, I don't see much of a reason not to do just the down, just the hit, honestly, and, uh, and get them down the ground. So it depends, I think, on the different add-ons you've taken as well. So I, this kind of sounds like this may have been worked on. Maybe not. But um, if you have add-ons that make your puke more effective, or and if you hit more ticks of it, let's call it, I'm not exactly sure how they measure it, to be honest. But if you hit more ticks of it, um, you have a significantly better chance of getting them injured quicker. We'll try it again. So, like, there's, there's amounts of which... D of puke damage that I'm doing. Now she's injured. Right in front of me. Take the swing. So... We saw you downstairs. Nope. Not happening. You've really messed that one up, man. Boom! And, uh... I guess we're settled here. We find the last person, we hang him up, and we got ourselves a uh, an adept. <laughs> so that was that was not the cleanest plays, I don't think, from me. And I don't think that just because we kicked butt right here, that means that this girl's OP. I've played against her and won quite a few times. I don't know where this other person is. I don't think I don't know if I get adept if I don't hang him. They were here. They didn't go downstairs. They've crawled out somewhere. Now we listen for him. Boom! There we go! Nice! Good stuff. So puking on them, if you get enough ticks of puke, uh, they get injured faster. So when you're right on their butt, it's a great time to do it. If they're going over something or around something, uh, like, you can puke to infect, like, windows and stuff like that. See that? And that, now that window, if you go over it, not if I go over it, but if they go over it, would infect them and add a stack of infection. 
But really what I think you're mostly looking forward to is getting the pools infected so you have your insta downs that you can use through windows and over pallets. And then otherwise, just trying to just trying to puke as much as you can. And um, if you got them stuck someplace, you know, take a swing if you have to take a swing. I don't see a problem with that. But if you do puke enough, you stack the puke enough, you do get uh, to kind of have free swings on them, which is pretty good, pretty useful, especially if they're not in areas with a lot of pallets. If they're in an area with a lot of pallets and stuff, good luck puking them three times before they can get to a pallet, you know? So it kind of depends on the situation that you're around, but really, a pretty darn powerful killer. It's a tier three infectious fright, tier one dark devotion, and a corrupt. Uh, GG. Stay up for more than two seconds. Eh, it was, it was tough. It was a tough game for y'all. And people are still very new against this killer, so keep that in mind as well. There you go. That would have been, in a live map, I think, a, uh, a adept right there. Pretty nice adept achievement. All right. Hopefully you guys, you, you, hopefully you all are enjoying. I am enjoying uh, playing against her. Again, that was my first time ever playing as her, and uh, she's, she's goofy, but she's kind of fun. Alrighty.